Rice Chex, and Wheat Chex. The bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Appy have entered a repair shop in Mercury City to search for a spy from interstellar space. Well, the room's empty, sir. Cargo is telling the truth. It's the same will take Cargo to headquarters for questioning. Commander, look. Behind that cabinet. Don't try anything, Commander. It's Smeed. Come out here, Smeed, with your hands up. I'm in control here, Corey. There is a deadly, invisible beam right between us. Now drop those guns, or you'll be nothing but a heap of ashes. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, Design for Disaster. Hang on to your space helmets, gang. Here comes Cadet Happy. Around the corner. Over the fence. And clear the way because here he is. Hi, hi, Captain Tufeld. I have. Hey, how come all the shortcuts? Why the big rush? It's smoking rockets. I was in a hurry to get here and tell all the space patrollers about this neat new surprise the commander has for him. Take a look, Captain. It's plenty terrific. Wow, the Space Patrol Periscope. An honest-to-goodness Space Patrol Periscope with magic mirrors that let you see around corners, over fences, and around trees and over bushes. But nobody can see you. Yes, sir. You see without being seen. Over the heads of a crowd, too, because the Space Patrol Periscope is a big, big 24 inches long. It's tapered special for wide-angle vision with a real mirror at the top and one at the bottom, too. Jump in, Jupiter, gang. You sure can have fun with one of your own. The commander wants you to have one, too. And he wants all of you to listen to today's Space Patrol adventure and find out how we use our official Space Patrol Periscope. So get your paper and pencils ready. In just a few minutes, I'm going to tell you how to get your Periscope. Say, Captain... How did you know I took all those shortcuts a while back? Over the fences and around the corner. Oh, sure. How space happy can you get? You were peering through your periscope. Right, Cadet. Ah! And now, today's Space Patrol adventure designed for disaster. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have captured one of the agents from Tirana, a distant solar system that plans to attack the United Planets. For hours now, Buzz has given phrenograph tests to the agent Rogart, attempting to learn all possible information about the enemy. Happy is in the commander's central office right now at Space Patrol headquarters as Buzz enters from the security lab. Hello, Hal. How's it going, Commander? You getting anything out of Rogart? Oh, yeah. But even with the phrenograph, it's slow. Found out where Tirana is? Yes, from the constellation Pegasus. A little more than 80 light years from our solar system. Well, if we only had enough star drive ships to send on a scouting mission. And when's the attack scheduled? Well, Rogarth doesn't know. Well, it's too bad that other agent Smeed got away from us. I'll bet he knows. Rogarth might help us locate Smeed. The next session of the Brennograph, I'm going to ask him to name every base of operation and every hideout Smeed might visit. Frankly, they have. Unless we locate Smeed and find a way to stop that attack from Tirana, the United Planets are facing slavery or annihilation. Almost anyone is likely to enter a space phone repair shop. Also, strange pieces of equipment and strange noises are not likely to cause suspicion in such a place. These are two reasons why Matthew Smeed has set up another Tyrannian agent, Pax Targo, in a space phone shop in Mercury City. Smeed, carrying a small receiver, has just entered Targo's shop. Good afternoon. I wonder if you could tell me what's wrong with this set. It's okay, Smeed. No one's in the shop. Uh, good. Have you contacted Griff Benyon? Yes. He's very interested in your proposition. <laughs> I knew he would be. Benyon is the type of criminal who prefers the melodramatic. I'd say that blowing up the Mercury City atmosphere plant just to rob a bank is more than just melodrama. Of course. It's military strategy for the Tyrannian cause. But Benyon doesn't know about that part of it, does he? No. Now, he thinks I just want a share of the bank loot. Mm-hmm. And Benjamin is willing to plan the explosive himself? Yes, as soon as I can keep the device. It isn't finished yet? There are a few more details to take care of. It's over there on the bench. I want to test the timing mechanism. All right. 
Now, tell me just what you told Banyan. Well, Banyan hides the explosive in the atmosphere pipe. Then he and his men put on spacesuits waiting for the explosive. Concealed, of course. Yes. The surface truck will be in Slaker's warehouse. When the atmosphere plant blows up, there will be a panic all over the city. Banyan and his men rush to the Mercury City Bank. Banyan's gang scoops up all the money they can lay their hands on, piles into the truck, and then goes to the spaceport. And we'll be on beams, waiting for Banyan to bring us our share of the money. Uh, suppose Banyan gets captured. Well, we'll see that he isn't, even if we have to dispose of him ourselves. Anyway, Banyan must never know that you have any connection with Tirana. Now, hurry and finish the time bomb. In his central office on Terra, Commander Corey has just completed his interrogation of the captured Terranian agent, Rogar. Right now, he's telling Cadet Happy the results of the phonograph test. Rogar was able to locate five possible hideouts where he might find Smee. Five? No, those shouldn't take any of the cover. The trouble is there are probably several more. But according to Rogar, Smee might be hiding in Saturn, in Jupiter's third moon, in Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Well, we could alert our agents and hit all five places at once. Well, that'd be fine, but you could be sure he'd be at one of those five places. If he's somewhere else, those simultaneous raids would only tip him off. Yeah, that's right. It would be even harder to find. However, I think I have something here that might solve our problem. In this cabinet. Uh, this could be the trick. Hey, what is it? It's that new piece of equipment I mentioned last week, Chap. The official Space Patrol Periscope. You, you mean that tube is, is going to help us find Smee? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll show you how it works. Look out the upper window, huh? Oh, yes, sir. I'll just move this chair up and stand on it. Now, that isn't necessary. You just take the periscope. That's it. Hold one end to your eyes and point the other end out of that top window. Smoking rockets. It's like being two feet taller. Yes. Yeah. Turning it sideways, you can see around corners with it. Oh, this is great. If there was a criminal around the corner with a blast gun, you could find out where he was without getting hit. That's right. And notice the wide-angle vision it gives you. Oh, this is some gadget. But, uh... Well, I still don't see how it's going to be much help in finding Smee. The way that we test it out in space. When you're outside of the strong gravity field of the planet, you can use a periscope to see objects millions of billions of away. Oh, like a high-powered telescope, huh? That's better than a telescope, huh? If you're out in space with a telescope, you might be able to see this headquarters building here in Terra. But with the periscope, you could see inside the building. You could look into any room, any office. Smoking rockets. So that's how we're going to look for Matthew Smee. Yes, I won't know we're watching why can't we work it right from here? Or from the roof of the building? Because of Terra's gravity field. The periscope is like our star drive spaceship. It operates through another dimension in hyperspace. When delicate long distance adjustments are necessary, the periscope must be in a near zero gravity field. I'm sure anxious to see how it works out in space. Well, let's go to the Terra 5, huh? We'll give the periscope its first action test. Millions of BUs from any planet, the Terra 5 cruises through space on automatic control. Buzz and Happy examine the new Space Patrol periscope, now held securely in a bracket attached near the control panel. Buzz has attached the small, compact adjustment mechanism which enables the periscope to focus upon any remote point of space. We drew another blank. I'll reset the adjustments for the place in Mercury City. Oh, the uh, Space Patrol repair shop? Yes. I've got it, Hap. Look through the periscope. Oh, it's like we were standing right in the street in front of the shop. Let me take over again. Things are focused to inside the shop. It looks legitimate enough. Huh? Some testing equipment. Several space upon receivers and transmitters taken apart. The desk and papers scattered all over. Anyone there, sir? Yes, there's a man working at the bench. Doesn't look like a space upon It's a square box with a sort of pop gun. Uh-oh. Someone's opening the door in the back of the shop. Now, take a look. Yes, sir. Smee. The man we're looking for, Mercury City. We can space up on Mercury City headquarters and have that shop surrounded. There's too much chance of Smee in the second call. Remember, he's surrounded by a whole shop full of space phone equipment. Chances are he's constantly monitoring our channel. Yeah, that's right. And for all we know, he might even know our codes. We'll keep watching him. Maybe we can pick up some hint. There it is, Smee. All ready for action. Good. Take it easy. Don't blow it out here. Yeah, don't worry. The safety switch is on. What about Griff Benyon? He's coming here to pick it up later this afternoon. All right, then all we have to do is... Ow! What's the matter? Something bit me on the hand. Where did these hands come from? Your desk is swarming with them. Oh, I put some fruit in the drawer yesterday and forgot about it. Where's your medicine kit? Don't worry, Smee. Those hands won't hurt you. How do you know they won? 
Remember, we're from another solar system. We may not be immune to bites from these insects. Hey, that's right. I'll get rid of them right away. You can do that when I'm gone. Now, about this deal with Griff Benyon. You set the timing device right here. When Benyon leaves, you go to the spaceport. We don't want to be in Mercury City when the atmosphere turns out. Smeed's leaving the shop, Commander. Can we follow him with the periscope? We can for a while, but when we get closer to Mercury, the increasing gravity field will blur the image. We'll land at Mercury City and go directly to that space phone shop. Maybe we can make Smeed's partner talk. Two hours later, Buzz and Appy are in a surface car on a side street in Mercury City. Leaving the car a block from the shop, they continue on foot. In the shop, Targall is carefully going through his papers... Destroying incriminating evidence. Yes, gentlemen, something I can do for you? Do you run this shop? Yes, I do. I'm Pax Targo. We're looking for a man named Sneed, Matthew Sneed. Sneed? I don't believe I know anyone by that name. We'll just take a look around, Targo. You won't find your Mr. Sneed here. Not now, maybe, but he was here. Yeah, we saw him. You, you saw him? No, let's not argue. Lead the way into that back room. Go on, Tyler. Keep your hands up. Yes, sir. There. As you can see, the room is empty. I'm taking you to headquarters for questioning, Tyler. Just what is this all about? Commander, look, behind that cabinet. Don't try anything, Commander. It's Smeed. Come out here, Smeed, with your hands up. I'm in control here, Commander. Do you hear that sound? That's a disintegrator beam. Disintegrator beam? That's right, Cadet. There's a deadly invisible beam in this room, forming a wall between you and me. Turn it off or I'll use this ray gun. Try it, and I'll sweep this beam over you. In a fraction of a second, you'll be nothing but a heap of ashes. Now, drop those guns. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. All set on the Pencils and Papers gang, in just seconds, you're going to find out how you can get your super sensational Space Patrol Periscope. The official Space Patrol Periscope with the magic mirrors that let you see around corners, over fences, while nobody can see you. Yes, you see without being seen. And gang, just wait till you get your first look through. It's a big, big 24 inches long and tapered special for wide-angle vision with two mirrors. One at the top, one at the bottom. It comes in real George space colors, too. Blue, yellow, and red. Wowie! Think of the fun you can have peering at your pals through your periscope. And you'll have lots of fun putting your periscope together, too. You do it yourself. Easy directions are right on the envelope it comes in. And it takes only a few minutes, and presto, you're set to start peering through your periscope. Now, gang, remember, you can see around corners and over fences and around trees, over bushes. But nobody can see you. Okay? You set with pencil and paper? Here's how you get your official Space Patrol Periscope. Send a rice checks or wheat checks box top, together with your name and address, and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Now, Space Patrollers, don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure designed for disaster. With the aid of the new Space Patrol periscope, Buzz and Happy located Matthew Smeed in a hideout in Mercury City. Smeed and his accomplice, Pax Targal, are agents from the remote solar system Tirana, which is preparing to attack the United Planets. When Buzz and Appy accosted Smeed in the back room of the space phone repair shop, Smeed cut on a disintegrator beam and threatens to focus the deadly rays on the space patrollers. You haven't a chance for it. Do as you're told. If that's a disintegrator beam, Smeed, why doesn't it destroy the walls of this room? It's simple. It's tuned to a frequency that affects only living tissue. It doesn't harm inorganic life this matter. However, if you like a demonstration, just watch what happens to the cadet. All right, Smeed, this round is yours. Stop your ray gun, Happy. Yes, sir. Very wise, gentlemen. Pargo. Yeah? When Corey and the cadets step back, and I'm sure they will, you pick up their weapons. 
Don't move till I tell you to. You might step into the disintegrator beam. I'll wait. Don't worry. Step back, gentlemen. Into that closet. Go on. All right, Targo. Get their guns. You can cut off the disintegrator now, Smeed. I got them covered. Lock them in the closet. Sure. Now, I want you to get on the phone and call your friend. Oh, you mean... Yes, you know very well who I mean. Tell him there has been a change in plans. We will bring the necessary equipment to him. What about Corey and the cadet? When we leave, I'll turn the beam on. That'll keep them under control. There. He can't get out of this room without knocking out a wall. Now get that bomb and let's get out of here. I don't hear anything out there, sir. I think they've gone. Yeah, I think speed about us off that easy. Let's try breaking out and see what happens. No objection so far. I'll give him another kick. The room's empty, sir. They've gone off. Hold it, Hat. Don't move. The disintegrator beam is on. Oh, when I was just about to cross the room. The source of that beam is down there. We can get to that machine and turn it no, off. No, we can't. Speed placed it where we can't get to it without stepping into the beam. Then we're blocked. We could only find exactly where that beam is and locate its boundaries. Perhaps we could crawl under it. Uh-oh. Well, what is it, sir? Look down at the floor next to the wall. You won't see anything? Except a swarm of ants? That's what I mean. See, they're crawling along the molding. An army of them. Hap, if we can get some of those ants in that metal bar, we can use it as a test rod. We'll move it around slowly. When the ants start disappearing or dropping off, we'll know that they... Hey, we'll know we're on the beam. Great. I'll, I'll get the rod. Get some ants on it. And we'll start near the floor and work up. Carefully holding the bar at arm's length, Commander Corey probes for the invisible beam. Inch by inch, he advances across the room. Be careful, sir. It's a foot off the floor and the ants are still okay. Uh-oh. Now they're gone. This is the lower limit of the disintegrator beam, Hap. About 18 inches off the floor at this point. We'll lie on our stomachs and crawl across the room to the door and keep low. Don't worry, sir. I'll be so flat you'll think it's my shadow. Moments later, Buzz and Happy are in their surface car. As they drive toward Mercury City headquarters, the commander issues spaceophone orders to the City Patrol Division. Are those instructions clear, Captain? Yes, Commander. I'll assign men to watch the repair shop. The guard at the spaceport will be alerted to stop speed and cargo as they show up. Well, one more thing, Captain. I want you to check on a couple of phone numbers I found on scraps of paper at the spaceophone shop. Find out who they're listed to and the address. Yes, sir. They're both Mercury City numbers. Virgo, 45907... And four, two, three, six, one, one. I'll trace them immediately, Commander. Inform Colonel Harris that I'm blasting off immediately to make some tests with a new periscope. May be able to locate Smeed with it. Corey out. Elsewhere, in another part of Mercury City, Smeed and Targal wait impatiently beside a spaceophone. What's wrong with Banyan? Why doesn't he call? I hope he didn't lose his nerve. Well, he's had plenty of time to place that explosive at the atmosphere plant. <laughs> Get it. Yeah? This is Banyan. Everything all set. Have any trouble? Not a bit. Time bomb is hit where nobody could find it, even if they were looking for it. Where are you now? At a booth at the Space Hotel. You better get to the warehouse. There isn't much time. I'm on my way now. Okay, Banyan. See you later. Everything's going fine, Smeed. You get over to the warehouse. We can use two of those stolen spacesuits for our getaway. Thousands of DUs from the planet Mercury, Buzz and Happy recheck Smeed's known hideout for a trace of activity, focusing the periscope carefully from planet to planet. Captain Walters, at Space Patrol Headquarters, Mercury City, calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Corey here. Go ahead, Captain. I traced both of those numbers, Commander. The Virgo number is a doctor's office. Dr. Chandler. Doc's okay. He says a packed cargo made an appointment by phone and then canceled out. He never saw a Targol, and he never heard of Matthew Smith. How about that phone number? Uh, it's listed to Slaker's Warehouse on Meridian Street. There's no answer. What's the address? 
101 North Meridian. I'll check it with the periscope. Anything else, Captain? Nothing on speed or targo. We got a report from the atmosphere plant. One of the guards thought he saw a grip banyan duck down the stairway. The guard sure it was banyan? Yes, sir. But he got away. Colonel Harris has ordered a complete search of the atmosphere plant, but so far we haven't found anything. Ask the colonel to continue the search. Keep all space patrol personnel away from that warehouse if I scan it with a periscope. I'll contact you later. Hurry out. Have to get that map of Mercury City and check the coordinates of that warehouse. I've already done it, Commander. On the way, just for luck, we'll see what's going on at the atmosphere plant. Okay. If Drift Banyan's hiding there, the periscope might be able to sneak up on him where the guards couldn't. Methodically, with delicate adjustment of the periscope focusing control, Buzz explores every corridor every room of the vast atmosphere plant in Mercury City. They watch the technicians at work. They see guards searching storerooms, peering behind machinery. There is no sign of Drift Banyan. Well, if Banyan was there, he's gone now. Yeah, with the periscope, we've been able to look into places the guards overlook. Now, wait a minute. Take a look at this. Look under that large vent. What do you see? It's a piece of equipment. A meter of some kind, I guess. Doesn't it look familiar? Well, in a way, yes. It's sort of crude and homemade, but the last time we saw that box, it was on a bench in Targold's space upon the passion. That's right. Now I remember. Sure, there couldn't be two boxes just like that. There's a tie-in between Sneed and Drift Banyan. We're really into trouble. You think either Sneed or Targold gave that box to Banyan, and, and Banyan put it in the atmosphere plane? Probably. It's very likely an explosive of some kind. Wow, if that main filter blows up, it'll cut off the air supply for all of Mercury City. Well, I contact Mercury City headquarters. You switch your periscope back to that warehouse. Thought of something I overlooked. Yes, sir. Panacore aboard Terra 5 calling Captain Walters at Mercury City Headquarters. Urgent. Corey to Mercury City Headquarters. Captain Walters here, Commander. Uh, Captain, listen carefully. Send a demolition squad to the central air purifying chamber at the atmosphere plant. Under the main vent, they'll find a small box. It's probably a time bomb. Well, that's why Griff Banyan. There may not be much time, Captain. I want trained demolition men on that job right away. Yes, Commander. Double a guard at the spaceport. Smeed and Cargill are working with Banyan. With that bomb ready to go off, they'll stop at nothing to escape. Hurry out. How about that periscope? You got the warehouse yet? Yes, sir, but the image isn't too clear. I thought I saw something move, sir. Near the truck. Oh, you did. Sir. The four men there, all carrying something. Spacesuit. With official space patrol insignia. Hey, we'd better tip off headquarters to round them up. I'll order a stakeout surrounding the block. Move in now might scare away the men we're after, the ringleaders. The image is completely gone now. Take the periscope out of the bracket. We may need it when we get back to Mercury City. Landing at Mercury City Spaceport, Buzz and Happy find no indication of alarm. Under the normal activity, Space Patrol personnel are quietly preparing for any emergency if disaster should strike. Right now, in the service car, Buzz and Happy speed to the warehouse on Meridian Street. As it pulls to a stop at the rear of the structure, Buzz makes a last-minute space phone check with headquarters. Corian surface car M78 calling Captain Walters at headquarters. Walters here, Commander. Happy and I are at the warehouse. Any word from the atmosphere plant? It just came in. It was a bomb, all right, but it's harmless now. Oh. Demolition men said it was the trickiest gadget they ever handled. It was set to go off at 1,500 hours. If it had, the whole air purifier unit would have been blown clear through the atmosphere shell. Oh, close call. Thanks, Captain. Stand by. Hurry out. Now, Happy, where we go to work? In the past, car. Yes, sir. Except one. He's getting one laid out. It's Targo. I can't tell. Oh, yeah. Some of them are getting into the truck. And Targo's looking at his watch. Just 15 minutes. I expect to explain to him. Oh, it's funny. Four men are in the back of the truck and the fifth man is locking them in. But they got him willing to look at me. Something's gone wrong with the bomb. You must have tampered with the setting. 
You crazy. Look, Farmer Nobon, the boys and I are going to pull off that bank job. Get your now. hands up, Banyan. You too, Targo. Banyan, unlock the park. Let the boys out. No, you don't, Banyan. Get Banyan half. I'll handle Targo. <laughs> All right, Banyan, on your feet. And get out of that space suit. You won't be needing it. Right, tackle, huh? Now, you want to continue the workout, or will you tell me where to find your pal Smead? He, he's near the spaceport, waiting for the explosion. Yeah? Well, we've got news for you. The only thing that's going to blow up will be Smead's plan. An action preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. A secret agent from outer space, or a spy right here on Earth. That's you, space patrollers, spying through the magic mirrors of your neat new official space patrol periscope. And man, oh man, you're in for plenty of exciting times with yours. You can set your periscope sights on all your Earth pals, spy on them from around corners, over fences, and from behind trees. Those magic mirrors of your periscope let you see them, but they'll never, never see you. Yes, sir. You see, without being seen. All right, Dick. Space Patrol is this is Commander Corey. And listen, here's something special that'll come in mighty handy when you're out space time. It's an identification chart printed right on your periscope. Shows you exactly what the people who live on all the major planets might look like. What's more, on every periscope, there's a place for your name, address, and solar system. And remember, Space Patrollers, this is a real periscope. A big 24 inches long and tapered special for wide-angle vision. With a mirror on top and one on the bottom. Space Patrollers, be the first official space spy in your gang. Get your own official Space Patrol periscope today. And here's how you get them. Send a rice checks or wheat checks box top together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That address again is Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. And your rice checks or wheat checks box top. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Bite-sized checks taste good to me. Bite-sized checks, wheat checks, rice checks. Get your checkerboard cereal today. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in their star drive ship when a patrol ship piloted by the spy, Matthew Smead, suddenly approaches. Keep watching Smead in the periscope, Hap. I'll blast away to another part of space. Yes, sir. Commander, what's wrong? A rocket's cut out. The emergency units are dead. We're in free fall. You're completely helpless, for it. The space plane. It's Smead. There is no escape, Commander. You're prisoners of Tirana. Be sure to listen next week for the thrilling story, Prisoners of Piranha, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol. <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks present exciting action on Space Patrol. <laughs> this program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the armed forces.